Dean Bowen arrived in the contemporary Australian art scene in the 1980s. In that time, he has produced over 90 solo exhibitions in Australia, France, Japan, Switzerland and the United Kingdom. His work is held in over 70 national and international public collections, including the National Gallery of Australia, Art Gallery of New South Wales, Heidi Museum of Modern Art, Australian War Memorial, the Bibliothèque Nationale and the Fukuoka Museum of Art in Japan. In 2009, Dean began work on a series of charcoal drawings inspired by the then newly discovered wreck of the Australian hospital ship Centaur off Queensland's south coast. Today, Dean will speak with us about his life and career and a brand new special exhibition of the Centaur series currently on display at the Shrine of Remembrance, entitled Dean Bowen's Imagining Centaur. My name is Neil Sharkey, I'm a curator at the Shrine of Remembrance and worked with Dean to develop and present his unique take on this terrible wartime tragedy. Hello, Dean. Hello, Neil. Dean, can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? How did you first become involved in art? Um, well, I grew up in central Victoria in a town called Maryborough and went to Maryborough Tech, which at that time in the late 60s, early 70s, had a really fantastic art department. And we had some fantastic art teachers and great mentors. And I found that yeah, working in the art um, school of the, of the tech was a really fantastic environment and we were fortunate enough to be given um, a bit of a good mix of all kinds of art. So we did printmaking, a bit of sculpture, photography, even a bit of history of art. And even as a young child, it was something that really um, attracted me a lot. How did your style evolve? What influences helped shape your unique vision of the world? Well, after uh, studying at Maryborough Tech, I went on to uh, study at RMIT in Melbourne and studied printmaking. And I got the urge to travel quite early and wanted to go to Europe and other places to visit museums and look at um, historic artworks and architecture. And uh, my passion was really whetted by travel. And even from a very early age, I really wanted to work as an artist. That was my dream to do. Should we have a look through your studio? Yeah, your please, studio? let's go in. Wow, what an amazing place. This is where it all happens. Yeah, yeah. Pretty much every day, sort of stand in front of the easel and go for it. <laughs> There's overlaps with each technique, so. Yeah. An idea can start as an assemblage but end up as a bronze or a painting or a print. So sure. I like that flexibility so it can go either direction. This particular palette's probably palette, must be yeah, about 20 years old. So yeah. um, originally it was a piece of perspex. Yep. Wow. So you can see under here how it's sort of gradually developed into a sculpture. <laughs> so. Um, some people have really wanted to take it, but I've said no, I'm too emotionally attached to it. Yeah. Is that one of the early hospital ship paintings that you did? Um, it is, yeah, so that's probably about, yeah, 2009 period. Getting onto the topic of the Centaur, what was it about the story of Centaur that made you want to pursue it as a subject? Well, I didn't really know much about the Centaur at all. I vaguely knew of hospital ships being lost at sea and but just very vaguely I didn't know particularly. So when the Centaur was rediscovered or the wreck of the Centaur was finally discovered I heard it on the radio and it really moved me quite deeply. Sure. Um, we've all sort of spent time in hospital at some stage either as a patient or visiting a loved one and the idea of something like that being lost at war was even more tragic than sort of all the other tragedies of war. So the discovery of that wreck really touched me deeply and I thought I wanted to you know, make some comment in art about the ship and hospital ships generally. Dean, did you do any historical research into the creation of the series? Did you, for example, look at old photographs, read about key individuals, listen to interviews? Or... Um, well, when the, when the works began, when the series began, I just thought of a hospital ship in my imagination and I imagined it in a tempestuous sea uh, with rain and I just did interpretive drawings with the fantasy of, of my imagination. Some of the first drawings of um, the uh, 
sailors and crew that had survived and um, Sister Savage, in my naivety, I, I thought, oh, they're in, they're in lifeboats, you know, when a ship sinks, they're in lifeboats. But then, um, you know, I found out actually that there were no lifeboats. They were just bits of flotsam and jetsam. Yeah. And I read that Sister Savage kept everyone's spirits up by singing. And we chatted away and talked about the others and I wondered, I could see rafts all around and wondered if there were any other sisters on those rafts. Your work is famous for its sense of whimsy, its joy and optimism. Why the dr dramatic departure? Have you undertaken work on dark themes like the sinking of Centaur before? Um, a little bit. Uh, my natural way of working is more optimistic mm. and more positive. I, I feel that there's enough negativity in the world without me sort of adding to it with sure. angst-ridden pictures. Um, so, yeah, that's my natural way of working. However, in the past, at times I have delved into more darker subjects. I think when the first Gulf War happened in 1991, I did touch on the subject of war. I did a series of uh, etchings and lithographs, uh, made some comment about Australia's involvement in the Gulf War, which was something I, I was very against because I felt, again, we were being sucked into someone else's war. How comfortably do you feel that the central drawings sit alongside your other work? Are they the, like, the black sheep of, of the, the Bowen family? Um, personally, I'm amazed at just how comfortable they do sit alongside your other work. Um, I, I, there's hardly a tension at all uh, in some respects, but, but they are very different. Well, so many things are unknown, and I guess sometimes when people ask me about my work, I, I sort of say, I, I don't know either, you know. Um, it's not sort of, I don't sort of have a set, uh, thing, this will work out this way. A lot of it is very experimental and one thing that's very important to me as an artist is creativity. So when you're trying new things, trying to do something different, there's often, you know, mistakes, mm -hmm. uh, accidents, good and bad, and I don't really know exactly where I'm heading. So um, the Centaur series was a great opportunity to let my hair down in a way and um, I had no preconceived idea of where the work would go, whether it would even be exhibited or not. So I felt really free to try things. And as time went on, yeah, one or two drawings became five or six, and eventually, yeah, there was a small series there. Can you tell us a little bit about your Japanese friends, Yutaka and Ayumi, and why you thought they should be involved in this project or or that they might be involved in this project? Well, in the mid-90s, I began exhibiting um, with Gallery Miyawaki in Kyoto, and we ended up doing quite a lot of exhibitions together. So it's over 25 years now. Mm -hmm. So I kept going back. Um, and during one of those exhibitions, probably about 12 years ago or so, we talked about the idea of doing an animation based on my paintings. Mm -hmm and the gallery knew Ayumi and uh, a producer. So we started to work in collaboration and we made the first animation, or, or really they made the first animation as actually a surprise for me. Yeah, right. So there was a short uh, two minute animation, uh, sort of the journey of a, a little man driving a car throughout back at uh, Australia mm -hmm. and um, the two-minute animation ended with the shooting star, which was one of my classic sort of symbols, sure. going over the horizon, um, all set to uh, classical Spanish guitar music. And e everyone just sort of liked it. Yeah, yeah. It was a, another happy uh, accident. And the gallery decided that we should sort of experiment with it, and we ended up uh, working with Ayumi on, I think, ten sort of two-minute animations. Mm -hmm. Um, again, we weren't sure what was going to happen and I let Ayumi have pretty much free reign, so sort of bombarded her with images yep. but sort of let her have her input into it as well, as well as Yutaka uh, Miyawaki, the gallery owner. They were strong collaborators with me, so it was, it was a fun thing. Mm. Uh, we weren't sure what would happen, but, yeah, we just did it. 
the centaur swims. But what could he have been but blind? Dean, we're looking at some of the drawings that didn't make it onto the wall of the gallery but are used in the animation produced by Ayumi. So, you know, they've been showcased in that format, but, I mean, they're great drawings in their own right. And, you know, they're depicting various scenes in the centaur story. What is it that, um, that gives them their power, do you think? In, in your opinion, I, I've got my own view, of course. Mm. Well, when we talked about making the animation, mm. it became sort of obvious that there was sort of parts of the story that were missing. Sure. So we created a, a storyboard. So it was a little bit different way of working than I'd worked previously on the series. Oh, okay, yep. So some of the drawings like the periscope and the torpedo were drawn with uh, it in mind that they would be animated to help tell the story. Mm. So- Feel part of the sequence, yeah. Yeah, so the, um, the, I imagined the periscope coming up and the wake following it, so I tried to, to draw in a way that, that I thought the animator could work with that and make movement. Um, same with the torpedo, with it going through the water and also the waves of the, and the uh, texture of the water, I tried to draw that in a way mm. that I thought the animator could um, make, make move. Yeah, that's so interesting. So they were a little bit different that way. Um, same with the sinking of the ship. Um, I, I tried to create an explosion so with, you know, the, these gestures um, tried to, you know, create um, the sinking of the ship and the explosion of the ship and to give the animator something to work with. I do try and mix it up a bit, which is why I like working across different different mediums. So for a long time, I just concentrated on etching, then a long time I concentrated on lithography, and then I diversified into painting and sculpture. So mixing things up is something that I enjoy a lot. Um, the Centaur series and the Hospital Ship series were all done with charcoal drawing, so it's a completely different way of working to how I normally work. But there are overlaps with the other techniques and the way I work because it's all done by hand. Charcoal's really sensitive technique. So the mark of the hand, the mark of the finger, um, working directly on paper, uh, working with rubbings and frottage. Um, there's a real intimacy and immediacy that uh, is something that's very attractive uh, to me to work that way. Um, it, it is different, but... Um, I think, yeah, from the reactions I've had so far, people are quite excited to see a different chapter of my work. I was lucky enough to be given some charcoal by the foundry I work with. Oh, so yeah. a byproduct of casting bronze is sometimes they get charcoal. Oh, yeah. So they gave me a big bag of random charcoal chunks, yeah, yeah. Um, which were great because each piece was a different shape and made different marks. So nearly... Oh, that's fabulous. I just assumed, you know, like you'd gone to, gone <laughs> the, to the art shop. shop and just bought the, you know, the well, pre-cut pre um, things. Some, uh, some was with the art shop charcoal, yeah. but some was the more sort of organic pieces from the foundry. Oh, that's great. So, so it's like a link to your, your bronzes in a way, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's a step. Um, I, I love that uh, idea of a linkage like that. And, of course, it's really good to use your hands as well. Rework. It's one of the great things about charcoal that, you know, it's just sort of endless. A lot of the drawings in the series sort of began the same way. So I'd use those rough chunks of charcoal, put the drawing down on the floor of the studio and just do a frottage of the floor. So do a rubbing of the concrete. So where the concrete had sort of texture and irregularities, they sort of came up um, in in the drawing because it's so sensitive mm -hmm. to charcoal. Yeah. So it was a good way to sort of loosen up and, and begin and not be too precious about it. Dots, scratches. It's 
sort of like a footprint of an animal. It's just a great technique, yeah. Now that the exhibition is installed at the shrine, how do you feel about the approach that we took, i.e. the combination of your art with the animation and the light projections and all those elements standing alongside historical material, original artefacts, photographs and so forth? I know you and I spoke about this approach in great detail during the developmental phase and it's probably what sets this exhibition apart from some of the more just purely artistic exhibitions you've done in the past. Uh, are you happy with the result? Like, did we go down the right road, do you think? I think we did, Neil, yeah. thank you. Um, your, your concepts of doing an installation, it's something quite different to what I normally do because mm. normally it is an exhibition where people look at individual pictures quite often in a white cube. Sure. So your ideas about the installation with the, um, the lighting and creating uh, the effect that actually the drawings are either underwater or floating on the water, that was something new. And for me, mm. and um, I really like very much the way you did that. Also, the mounting of the drawings, not not in a frame, but um, no, floating off the wall. Float, floating yeah. off the wall, sort of almost like osmosis, because the backing's slightly yeah. uh, inside the paper. I think that was very effective. Now, the current pandemic is creating many challenges for the shrine and would-be visitors to the shrine. Uh, first and foremost is the fact that for many months the shrine was unable to provide access to the exhibition at all. Um, what is your message to people who to date have only been able to view elements of the exhibition online? Why should they be so excited now at the opportunity to come in and view the exhibition for themselves? Well, I feel that um, the real thing is much more interesting and powerful than the virtual, um, especially with an exhibition like this where there's also the effect of the lighting. Mm -hmm and there's the art, but there also there's the historical objects that were actually there on the ship and the photographs of um, the crew, the soldiers, the nurses, the doctors. So it's almost the complete package. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's educative, it's interpretive, it's art, but it's, it's the blend of everything together and, and being in the gallery is a totally different experience than watching it online. It's just amazing across all, your, all the different mediums that you work in, you know, your, 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 your prints, your paintings, your bronzes, your charcoals, uh, these uh, works made with found objects. And, but it's all, it's all you, you know, it's all recognisably mm. you, your work. It's a gorgeous technique. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. It's um, quite addictive once you get into it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I've the, noticed. <laughs> yeah. Dean Bowen's Imagining Centaur will be on display at the Shrine of Remembrance until April 2022. Check our website for details. Thank you for joining us and I hope that we'll see you at the exhibition very soon.